This one is certainly something that's been around for a long time, but it seems now to actually be getting somewhere and there may be a lot of traction. Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, Ronald Lamola, will today outline the developments towards the decriminalization of sex work in South Africa. Now this relates to the Sexual Offences and Related Matters Amendment Bill following the Cabinet's approval of the publishing of the bill for public comment on the 30th of November 2022. The bill repeals the Sexual Offences Act, which was previously known as the Immorality Act of 1957. It also repeals Section 11 of the Criminal Law, which relates to the Sexual Offences and Related Matters Amendment Act of 2007, with the intent to decriminalize sex work. The Department of Social Development says it is also holding dialogues with sex workers to build momentum towards the decriminalization. Now, to help us unpack this, we are joined on Zoom um, by human trafficking victim, former sex worker, social activist, and author of the book Exit, Griselda Grootboom, and founder and executive director of Survivor Emp Empowerment and Support Program, Mickey Maggi. Good to have both of you, and thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you so much for having us. Good morning. It, it, it's an absolute pleasure. I know, Griselda, I know that you are, you're on your, your phone line, just uh, the usual load shedding, unfortunately taking your face away from us, but I'm glad we have your voice. That's what's important. So while I've got you and you, 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 you're still with us, let's, let's begin by getting your view on the matter. I mean, I don't imagine that there's any other stance that you take other than mm -hmm. this needs to be decriminalized and yesterday? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, for me, it was a question always of how does decriminalization uh, look like in South Africa? Um, mostly because of, you know, the statistics we get to see from the police when it comes to rape and femicide. And for me, it feels like it's just another gap that is opening a platform um, for pimps, for buyers, for drug dealers. To, to exploit uh, more women in recruiting them. Um, but then again, you know, uh, the organizations, the lobby organizations, especially from the health, and especially from um, other organizations, feeling, you know, they will be able to see certain things like identifying human trafficking, um, also just helping with the rape that's going. And I'm thinking, yeah, but what about the women in rural areas? Um, a lot of women, just general women, they come out of marriages and still complain on rape. And then our police death, uh, death tables, are they ready for these kind of complaints that's going to happen? Mm -hmm. So my question is to this bill would be, you know, um, is it just going to protect the women and, and, and you know, decriminalizing or decriminalizing the men? Is it going to explain them? And how will this bill support them from brothels, keepers, and pimps, and sex buyers? Yeah. And how will it protect them from illnesses um, and from the sex trade? And will it protect them or will you just, you know, add more what we have in South Africa when we speak about gender-based violence and rape? Okay. So, yes, and I feel like the discussion was not really open to all societies. I mean, I mean you just, you know, you just think now that, you know, people are trying to, you know, the Minister of Social Development is creating a campaign around momentum for sex workers. But what about the rest of society? Like, do we, are we comfortable with this? And we still have questions around it. And as a survivor, I was trapped uh, for two weeks to be in the sex trade for at least about 12 or 13 years. So this, you know, campaign that happened yesterday, my body, my business, I'm worried are they, are, are they trying to make it look good because there's no good in this trade because there's mostly violence, there's mostly abortion, there's definitely if you're going to contract the disease. Um, I haven't met a, a customer in that time asking me to use a condom. They pay you more without a condom. Um, and those are the risks that is. And I feel this is just another high level risk um, for human trafficking and sex trafficking to become more and, and, and mm -hmm. you know, violent and, and high risk of, of unhealthiness. 
Griselda, mm -hmm. thank, thanks so much. I, I know that we've the, the, the line is just, it, it's such a bad line that we've got you. You're kind of coming and going and the, the sound is not great. But I, I think we've got the gist of what you're saying. But, and, and you're such an important voice that we need in this conversation. But let me bring Mickey into this. Mickey, um, I, 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 I imagine you've heard what Griselda's had to say and her views on what you know she feels and particularly coming from she this was the work that she had done but there are obviously a lot of different sectors that get or players in this industry so if we can look at that what does decriminalization actually mean for different players in the industry i mean it's not only made up of sex workers but the impacts on families communities uh, the benefit to so-called pimps brothels their owners other related activities and aspects perhaps you can outline that for us Hi, um, thank you also um, for having us um, this morning. So what I would like to say um, is that we know that the minister is going to address, we've had um, things that have been said in the past week by our government. Uh, I would like to just point out um, to your question, what does decriminalization mean for society at large? Full decriminalization, or let me rather just um, unpack it, the decriminalization of prostituted persons alongside pimps, brothel keepers, and sex buyers means disaster for our country. That's what it will mean. We are for the full decriminalization of the, those who are bought, sold, and exploited within the system of prostitution, with, which are the sex workers, um, as some may say, but we do not see any grounds to legitimize the, the purchase of sex pimping and brothel keeping, which may also, oh well, actually definitely lead to human trafficking. That, that is a big point. It's a very, very big point. And is that, is that something that's under discussion as well? I mean, when we, we look at what it means, decriminalizing, are, are we hoping that the minister, when he does address this today, actually outlines the specifics around this? So we, are, we want a law in South Africa that is going to promote and protect the dignity and the rights of those who are bought, sold, and exploited within the system. We have not found reason um, as to why we need to promote the so-called rights of sex buyers or even rights of pimps and brothel keepers. So we, we, we want a law that is going to promote and protect the dignity of those who are prostituted within the system. So we are for the decriminalization of those, but we also need to move further and, um, and, and explore exit opportunities. And the reason why we are against the decriminalization of prostitution, full decriminalization and its recognition as well, is that it, it, it covers everybody with the same blanket that everybody who is in who is being prostituted right now has actually chosen freely what they want to do with their bodies, which is not the case, actually, as we may know, uh, both from personal experiences and professional experiences of having worked with, with women, especially, that are prostituted. Uh, I've not come across one in my many years of working who says, I choose this uh, freely. Whenever it is that I have a conversation with women, I've asked them, you know, what did you grow up wanting to be? It's everything else but being prostituted or being a sex worker. And if I ask them, what do you want to be in future? It's everything else but a sex worker. So I'm not sure who's going to be benefiting from this with regards to prostituted persons, but we do know that um, uh, prosti uh, prosti I mean, pimps and brothel keepers, as well as uh, sex buyers, are going to benefit for, from this because sex buyers are going to have a legitimate reason or, you know, legitimate license to actually go and access um, women's bodies for their own sexual gratification. And just a, as much as um, prostituted bodies are going to be made available for pimps and brothel keepers to sell for their own financial gratification. And this has been proven in New Zealand. I spoke to women in New Zealand who were in prostitution before um, law reform, before the full decriminalization and uh, after. They told me even though after decriminalization they were free from police harassment, but that did not stop the sex buyers from uh, harassing them. So they then decided to move indoors. So what this actually means is that there is going to be an explosion of uh, brothels and pimping that is going to happen in this country because in order for one to become a worker, they then need to be employed. In, in this case, the employer then becomes the pimp or the brothel keeper. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how, how do we work around that? I mean, let's, 
let, let's talk about that because as much as you want to decriminalize <clears throat> the, the, the sex work, all right, that's what this is all about. So they, they want this, they will have more rights, they will have more access to health care, they could even get uh, unionized, they, uh, they, they, they form part of the tax base. I mean, these are the kind of things that will come with decriminalizing sex work. However, the now sudden booming of, of brothels and pimps and um, the abuse of, of, of women or men that work in this sector will come with that as well. So what do you want to see happening? I mean, what should be in place to protect the workers? Okay, um, so, you know, like I said before, this is only about promoting uh, brothel keepers because, I mean, the general sex worker... Um, if, if you may call them that, in the street is not going to automatically get labor rights. So South Africans need to be very aware of the language because we find that those who are promoting the decriminalization of prostitution and its recognition as work are promoting just two sides. They are pretending it's, it's either as if it's either criminal, continued criminalization or decriminalization. But there is a third way, which is actually right in the middle. It benefits everybody because, I mean, if you decriminalize the prostituted person and with continued criminalization or penalization of pimping, brothel keeping and sex buying, you are therefore pro uh, providing the women that or the persons that choose to be prostituted or to, to sell their the, the sex or access to their bodies, you are actually giving them a, an opportunity to do so. But as well as giving an opportunity for those who wish to exit the system of prostitution to, to be able to actually do so and seek assistance from the government and civil society. Whereas if we decriminalize and recognize this as work, you are, we are just say, saying that to everybody that um, if you want to exit prostitution, then you've got to work really hard and earn a lot of money and go back to school or do other things in order for you to be able to, to change careers. Mm. All right. Very interesting. Griselda, I think we've got you on a better line now, and I'm hoping that we can yeah. hear you properly. A, a, a lot has been said. Mickey's really touched on quite a few issues. Would you like to comment on them? Um, you know what I mean? Um, I can hear you. Yeah, let's try. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and let you speak for a bit and see if we can hear you properly. Okay. For me, that is all, um, you know, with, with the art and, and what they are going to do. And again, I go to my personal experience to know that I don't know how many times I've gone to the police station to say, I need this, I need that, I'm being discriminated and violated. So for me, it's a very emotional decision more because on the ground, you not and all the laws we have in South Africa, we are very, very congratulated that we have great laws, but they are never implemented, you know, yeah. um, just on our borders alone. So for me, and, and, and the work I do with public awareness um, with Survivor as a foundation is going out there and speaking to young people. And most of them will always cry out on how, you know, they were recruited or quickly served, almost trafficked. Um, and most of them was like almost in sexual exploitation. So with our laws in our South Africa, the laws we implemented, especially this one of decriminalization and giving, you know, women their rights to be on their body, it's very scary for me. And it's very scary for me for Kailicha, it's scary for me for Eastern Cape, it's scary for me um, in the Cape Flights because those laws are not really going to be implemented properly in South Africa, and it's not going to reach the girl that we're hoping she's walking from wherever to school and getting recruited by traffickers mm -hmm. to parents, because that's where it goes. The way reality works is that a girl is going to stand in her room next to a tavern that is owned by a prince, and she needs to pay for a booking. Yeah. And sometimes there are people or diamond that's going to go with you, which is a buyer, and disappear, then we have cases of disappearing. So when it comes to the law and how it's going to implement it and how it's going to look like, for me, I am scared. Like, yeah, I'm looking forward to those who are saying that it's going to show some some problems that, you know, we've been having around gender-based violence, and I really just want to see the, the proposal that they have. And like, yeah. I'm looking forward to what the Minister of Justice, the layout is going to be talking about, is the safety of women and girls in South Africa. I must say, Griselda, I'm also looking forward to it, because it, it does, in a way, scare me, too. Because, you know, when you when I'm listening to the stories, I read the stories of what... Of what 
you know, women go through in this particular sector. And already women that are not in the sector are still yeah. in a difficult situation. I mean, the state of the country currently is that mm -hmm. government, the police and communities are overwhelmed with gender-based violence. This is what we live with. And my concern is, will this not bring extra problems on the already stretched system and even embolden abusers and human traffickers? And this is what I'm hearing from both of you. There's a major concern here. It is going to make things so much worse. Because we can speak about the, the, the great part of it. Because, you know, you came out of Club Nibiru, it's fancy, there's security, there's police, and you're going to come to Gailicha, there's a tavern, but then, of course, now it's going to become a brothel. So, because girls are going to feel the need to tell, because there's a law, there's people. How are they going to be protected? Yeah. And that's what I need to know what the Minister of Justice is going to yeah. answer me. And well, see, like, how is that going to work? Yeah. And when it comes to the health and the hygiene of things, which I remember very well, are there going to be condoms laying around on our streets? Do we look to have to look forward to the 24 hour um, police or cleaning stations where abortions is going to grow up also under young people? So all of that um, in this house sector is also safety factors and individual of who are the, uh, you know, the players that's going to be protecting this and how it's going to work out. I'm looking forward to your speech. Yeah, indeed. We'll hear from him this morning. So uh, okay. apparently he is discussing this this morning. We're looking forward to that. Just, Mickey, let me let me leave the final word with you. We've got about a minute. W with many females, underage young girls that are already human trafficked and kept in properties as sex workers. I mean, I, I, I know I've been to see these, these young girls that are kept there, and it, it, it's devastating what you find. Will the law strengthen and protect the vulnerable, uh, who are most likely to be the sex worker from those wielding power and money? Um, okay, so if we if South Africa moves towards a full decriminalization of prostitution, which includes the decriminalization of pimping, uh, sex buying and brothel keeping, there is going to be no protection at all. As you said earlier on, that already as a woman in South Africa, we are feeling unsafe. How much more for the woman who has to be standing out in the street in the name of work at 2 a.m. going in strange men's cars and going to you know secluded areas in bushes to have um, sexual relations with these men? They are not feeling safe. The one thing that I, I must say is that the system of prostitution in, in its nature is inherently harmful. Not only that, it infringes on the right to dignity and also it threatens the right to life directly and indirectly in the sense that as a prostituted person, especially a woman, one is more likely or more at risk of, of experiencing men's violence against women um, as it is. Um, there is a study by Sweat that says those women and then, then their counterparts are 18 times more likely to experience um, men's violence against women, which means it's inevitable. They could die, and they've been dying at the hands of, the, of these men. Just like um, a few weeks ago, the six bodies that were found somewhere in Gauteng in a, in a garage. So those are the things that we're expecting to happen, especially more so that if we decriminalize, we want to have police, you know, patrolling and policing. The decriminalization means it's a, I mean, a person is free to do what they want with whom they want to do. So there isn't going to be policing. We, we don't even have a police officer per household in this country to deal with domestic violence, which is quite a high crime here in South Africa. Indeed, indeed. All right, ladies. We have to leave it there. It is seven o'clock, so we need to get into our main news bulletin. But this is a story we're not going to leave. We'll speak a lot about this. In fact, I think this is one where we, we in fact, need to take it to the streets and get reactions from those that work in the industry as well. Human trafficking uh, victim, former sex worker, social activist and author of the book Exit, Griselda Grootboom, and founder and executive director of Survivor Empowerment and Support Program, Miki Meji, sharing their perspective as the government puts processes in place to legalize sex work, well, decriminalize it, and we'll be hearing from the minister this morning sometime on the developments of that.